Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Joshua chapter 5 verse 15, Galatians chapter 4 verse 12, and Romans chapter 2 verse 13. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you for being such a precious father to us, Lord God. You know the future and you are gathering us to yourselves, Lord God. Help us to submit and come into the place of safety, Lord. We love you. We praise you. Mold our hearts. Make our hearts. Make us. God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Joshua chapter 5, verse 15. And the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take off your sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. All right, and so Joshua was in a place of um, about to be going to war, right? So he really didn't have time to kind of mince words and, and, you know, um, try to figure, you know, things out. But, um, remember Joshua was one of the spies who went into the land and he came back with a good report, him and Caleb, one of the only two spies who came back with a good report. And so they were men of faith, right? So faith, um, is a belief in something that you don't see, right? They, they are standing firm in faith when they might see something negative, but in their heart, they believe, right? You may see a giant, but in your heart, it's nothing to you, right? Because you know who your God is. You believe in your God. You have relationship with your God. You believe in what you cannot see. You know that there is something else more important in there and it is God, right? And he is upholding you. He is keeping you even when you don't see him, all right? And so when you um, have the seed of faith, faith grows and it takes root and it gets stronger and we begin to mature and we begin to learn of God and we begin to learn the character of God. So when he may present himself in another way, um, we still recognize him, right? So remember, um, Moses' uh, first encounter with God was in the burning bush, right? Um, but when God spoke to him and continued to speak to him, he didn't keep coming as in the burning bush, right? He he spoke in other ways. He spoke on the mountain and 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 he spoke through when when he was um in prayer seeking God's face to go across in the Red Sea and in all these many ways. He just spoke with God, but God didn't always come in the same way, right? It takes relationship with God to recognize when he is speaking, right? When he is is talking to you um, through this situation or that situation through this person and that person, right? Through that radio program or through that message that you received, right? Um we have to grow in relationship. And that's how Joshua was, right? It says, and the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, take off your sandals from your feet. All right. And so remember, Joshua is the head of this army, right? Of the children of Israel, right? The physical world, the physical realm, right? He is for all intents and purposes, what he knew, right? He, the baton had been passed to him, right? And so God had confirmed it and, and it was all good. They were moving forward in it, right? The Jordan, um, was split open and they crossed the cross, right? And, and they were, you know, people of faith. This was the next generation, right? And so he was the top of, of the, of the people as far as leadership. And you have this man coming and he's asking, okay, well, whose side are you on? Right? He wants you, him to define the terms. Who are you? right? Whose side are you on? And so he said, um, he asked him, are you, um, for us or for our enemies? And the answer was no, 
right? Noah. And then he says, and the, he, he said that he was the commander of the Lord's army. And so, you know, re relationship recognizes lordship, right? Relationship recognizes lordship. And so Joshua, when he encountered this commander of the Lord's army, instead of uh, questioning his identity and asking him to explain farther and asking him questions, right? He recognized the character of God. He recognized God right in this man and so instead of him um um you know saying okay that's good right when when he gave him instructions he followed instructions right and so he 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 was as a leader and a man of faith um, he recognized the Lordship here and he obeyed. It says, take off your sandals from your feet for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Right. And so he worshiped. He got down on the ground. He bowed down. Right. And and we know that if, if this was a man of faith and and this was um, an angel or anything else um, that was less than God, he would not have been allowed to get down like that and bow down to him, right, and worship. And so we recognize this as being um, a pre-incarnate Christ, most likely um, because he, he bowed down and he worshiped, right? And so, you know, when we have relationship with God, we begin to understand more and, and better. I'm not going to say we ever arrive to a full understanding because I feel like that will totally come in the thousand year reign when he is going to know us. We're going to know him as he has known us. Right. And so, um, uh, the, but as we grow in relationship, we uh, understand the character of God a little better and a little better, or at least we should. And so when Joshua recognized the character of God, when Joshua took the instructions and heeded them and obeyed and bowed down, this was because he had a relationship with God. He was a man of faith. He was a seed of Abraham. Right. Remember, the seed of Abraham was about um, being circumcised of the heart and not of the flesh first. Right. He had he was he was made righteous um, because he believed God and it was accounted unto him as righteousness. And this is that same sort of action of the seed of Abraham. Right. He is believing God and it is accounted unto him as righteousness. He believes Right. And so therefore he, he, he is righteous. He, he has that relationship. Right. And so the, the circumcision was an outward symbol. They had just got done with the circumcision. Right. They had just um, circumcised that next generation, all of them who had not been circumcised. But remember, these were supposed to be the children who were of faith already. So the circumcision was of the heart and it had already occurred. And that is where the relationship is in faith. Right. In in anticipation of God's victory in in anticipation of the move of God in, in learning the character of God in allowing the Lord lordship of God right and so here he recognized God by um the 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 character of of this captain of the commander of the Lord's army amen and so in order to do that you have to have a relationship with God right all right let's look at the second verse Galatians chapter 4 verse 12 brothers I entreat you become as I am for I also have become as you are. You did me no wrong, right? All right. And so this is, I'm sorry, right? All right. That's not at the end of it. Um, it says, you did me no wrong. All right. And so this is about um, 
the fact that when Paul was in Galatia, he, he became sick, right? And so they took care of him. And, you know, he was very happy with the people of Galatia, but he had found out that they um, were kind of leaning back on the law again and following the law and the circumcision and the Hebrew ways and the observation of the Hebrew customs and calendars and festivities and things like that. And so they were falling back into their old works of the flesh, right? Works of religiosity rather than um, this new covenant of freedom and relationship and the grace of God and, and having it written on their hearts and not on tablets. And so he was trying to encourage them to come back to faith, right? Come back to under that grace. Don't fall away um, back into this religious nature um, and, and works of the outer flesh that, that you think you're going to be justified by the work, right? It is only by Christ that justification comes, right? It's only by making him the Lord over your life, right? And so he's wanting them to lean back and rely on that and stop going back to their old way, right? Because um, here it says, brothers, I entreat you become as I am. So meaning a man of faith, right? A man of of justification by Christ rather than justification by their old Jewish customs. And so it says, brothers, I entreat you become as I am, for I also have become as you are. You did me no wrong. So meaning that he's not mad at them because they did something wrong to him, right? He's upset because he wants them to not fall away into their old ways. He he's he's um he has a zeal um to help them because they are are um wanting to to go back to the old way rather than trusting God for this new way. Right. And so um when when we do that you know uh, it can be very easy to to fall into the law right it could be easy because you don't have to maintain relationship to be in the law but guess what the law is going to justify no man right it, because you cannot um you cannot uh, actually accomplish the law right? You're always going to fail. You're always going to fall short, right? You must, you must be born again, right? You must have Christ. Christ is the one who is going to justify you. And that's just like that previous verse with Joshua, right? It is, it is not, um, by, by, you know, rank and in order that he recognized the lordship of God when he came before him. It was because he had a relationship with God that he submitted to this man, right? It wasn't because he said, oh, you're a commander and I'm a, I'm an executive chief third assistant. No, that it was relationship to God. It was a man, he was a man of faith. He was a commander of the Lord's army. And this was a man of faith that he was speaking to. So he, he did, he took those sandals off. He got down, right? And he submitted himself. And so, you know, we have to have relationship for that to, to be, right? And, and Paul here is saying to the Galatians, hey, don't go back to the, to the, to the tablets. Let him write it on your heart. Let him speak to you. Let come under this new covenant. Come under this new way of justification, not by works, but by Christ Himself. Right? He has done all the work that we need to have eternal life. Right? So come under that covering and don't go back to the old way. All right. And so Romans chapter 2, verse 13 
is the third verse that the Lord gave me. For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but the doers of the law who will be justified. Wow. Okay. And so this seems like it's saying the opposite, but guess what? It's not. This here is where Paul is letting them know it's not going to be the one who hears the law right? Who's going to be made right? You can go to the temple every day, right? But it's going to be the doers of the law who will be justified. And guess what? You can never do enough, right? You can never actually perfect it. The only one who could perfect it and not walk in sin was Christ himself, right? It's not just the, the hearers of the law, right? You can hear all the law and and mess up on one point and then you're a transgressor right then you become a transgressor right and there is no one who is righteous no one does the right thing no not one right no one is going to be justified in that way right except the one who does it perfectly and the only one who did it perfect but the one who fulfilled all the law and the prophets and that is Christ Jesus Right. And so here um, Paul is is letting them know it looks like it's saying the opposite, but it says, for it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but the doers of the law who are who will be justified. And we know that the only way we can come under that do is to let someone else do it for us. And Christ did it. Amen. And so we can come under his justification um, by God's grace. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, that we can lean not on our own understanding, but in all of our ways, we can acknowledge you and you're going to direct our path. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We ask you to forgive us for all of our sins. Help us to heed your words, Holy Spirit. Help us to follow behind you, Lord God. Help us to recognize the deity of Christ, the, the Lordship of Christ. Help us to recognize him when he is speaking to us, whether he's coming from the burning bush or he's coming in the form of the commander of the Lord's army. Lord God, help us always to know your voice. Your sheep know your voice and know other will they follow lord god in order for us to know your voice we have to be in relationship with you help us to know your voice holy father help us to know you lord god let us not lean on the writing on the tablets help us to have it written on our hearts god we love you we praise you we ask you to forgive us for our sins, God. We are blessed, blessed, blessed to have you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.